Tricome Pay is a, it's an open loop financial system designed to provide peace of mind to customers, business, and financial institutions, enabling banks to provide banking services to the cannabis industry. Okay, cannabis is the primary audience that we are going for first. You can keep going. Um, did that miss a couple slides first? Huh. Okay. No, that's fine. Go back to the other one. Basically, cannabis is, under the banking viewpoint, is a cash-intensive business that's federally illegal. So when the regulators are on the stage, they're sitting there and saying, it's illegal, you can't do this. When they get off the stage, they're sitting there and saying, we need a solution to this problem. And we need the solution that we can examine the institutions, the institutions can provide us the information that we need to know that they are monitoring and managing this industry the way that they do for any other cash intensive business. And cash intensive businesses have been a department of the, have been a target of the Department of Justice for probably the last 10 years or more. Okay? This goes down to gun sales, money service businesses, pawn shops. Tricom Pay is designed to work in any of those environments. So we built the system out. So not only does it work for cannabis, but will work for any high-level cash-intensive business. It's, done. Okay. it's a secure loop monetary ecosystem, which will, as we just said, design for payment processing, compliance, regulatory reporting, and risk management. This just explains some of the things that we do. The benefits are we can reduce the cash in the system. We reduce the costs associated to any of the businesses in the system because as you reduce cash, you're reducing the costs associated with transporting the cash, insurance cost, security cost, and everything involved, whether it is a wholesale business or whether it is a retail dispensary. Keep going. Today's banking regulation, the Federal Reserve has gone down very strongly, and the Federal Reserve Bank in the Federal Reserve System controls the credit card processing system. And that's basically they're saying no to credit card processing for cannabis business. They're also talking about the issue of the major debit card rail systems and MasterCard and Visa because they're public companies not being involved in it. The issue right now for public companies in this industry, and I'm getting to this so you understand what's going on and why banking is such an issue, is that if you're a public company and you're involved with cannabis, are there any lawyers in the room? Any lawyers do D&O claims? If you have a public company and they're involved in a federally illegal business, how easy is it to sue them and collect money for doing something that's wrong? Piece of cake. Okay? That's why you have public companies that are not involved in this business. Okay? Unless they're doing something that's ancillary and not touching directly. Now, they can get legal, they can be legal businesses in Canada because it's legal in Canada, so that's why you have public companies out of Canada. Let's go to the next slide. Okay? As we've discussed, there are a lot of cash intensive businesses. And we've designed the system so that we can add it to any of those other industries later in time. We just chose cannabis as the initial industry to pick and focus on. Okay, opportunities in beer, wine, liquor stores, pawn industry, hemp industry, cannabis industry, they all have heightened regulatory compliance. Some of the numbers we're seeing, we're talking about $24.5 billion a year in 2021. Anybody know whether that's retail or wholesale? Retail. So if you take probably anywhere between three and four times that size for your wholesale transactions, you're talking about a 60, 80 billion dollar marketplace currently based on transaction volume in dollars. So the retail industry is only a small microcosm relating to the wholesale marketplace. Our whole focus point is getting the wholesale marketplace involved in the system and involved in banking in the proper fashion, then it will flow back down to retail. Try to pay for the cannabis industry. Schedule one drug, this is why we're talking about why they sit, while well, the, well, the federal government and the bank regulators stand on stage and say it's federal legal and that's all we can say. But when they get off the stage, then they can say we need this solution. And they need a solution that they can rely on. How do we know that? I've met with the senior level executive for the National Credit Union Administration, the general counsel. I've met with the senior level people from the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, 
I used to run investigations for the FDIC for the Western part of the United States. And my team is comprised of all senior federal regulators, a good part of it, or very high level tech people. We're taking the cash out monetization strategy. Every transaction that goes through, people are paying a price for that. We're right on time. So what you have is the need to have transaction fees. So out for when you deposit money into a financial institution, we're going to be charging a transaction fee on that deposit, whether it's a cash or electronic transaction that goes in. State, try to come operating principles, compliance with state laws, interaction with cannabis, no interaction with cash, and we comply with federal laws. That's what it's designed to do for the financial institutions as well as the industry components. We have, keep going, we've been favorably, favorably received by regulators. We've talked with all of them. We're actually, if you look at what your regulators can give to you right now, they can't accept in terms of say that we recommend your product because it's federally illegal. They can say, no, don't do it, don't have anything to do with it, not at all. They can give you acceptance, yeah, we like it, go ahead. Or they can provide you guidance. We are getting guidance from the federal regulatory agencies, meaning that when we go out to a state or want to talk with a state, they're providing the relationship both between the federal and the state and giving us a warm introduction to the state level. So really what we are, we're the middle of the whole loop in the system. We see, our goal is to see the transactions going through and every transaction going through to build up a database of information to, cr to create an anti-fraud program. That's the heart of what our company will be in the future, is having knowledge of all the transactions to enable the financial institution and the businesses to protect against people coming in and looping, coming in multiple times, coming in from other states to come in. These are the things that we will be able to capture and are able to capture for every transaction. This is our system. Okay? Whether you're a business or an individual, you're coming in through. Can you click on this one? That little gray? Little right there, yeah. I think you might have to. That leads you right what the track on pay system will look like. So basically, we'll have every single transaction. We built it off of Salesforce, so we have complete flexibility and we can make grow exponentially very quickly. And FastSaw is on the cutting edge of bringing in different sub-platforms to their system to enable you to grow and provide better information on a daily basis. Let's go back to the system. Okay, you run through, there's a payment gateway. We run through, take the transaction information and provide it into our own system. So as we collect the transaction information, and as the transactions go through the system and are tested, they'll either accept or reject. We onboard all the information for a company that wants to get into the system. For example, you're a grower. You onboard into our system. You provide all the required information. That gets sent to the financial institution. The financial institution kicks the bricks, meaning they meet you, they touch you, and they sign you up if they accept you as a client. We are not taking away anything from the financial institutions and their responsibilities. That's why the, federal, the regulators like us and the examiners like us. Because we can provide them the reports and provide them everything that they need. With that, when you go through the system, they're able to track and trace and do everything necessary. Because of the relationships that we have at the highest levels of being the former federal regulators, we're able to open the doors and get in to see them. One of the slides before talked about training. We're working with the, the Conference of State Banking Supervisors. We're working with the, the Community Bankers Association. We're working with the American Bankers Association to develop our product and a product that they will want to and have said already, see come out and endorse on the trade group side and, want, and potentially white label our product. So our offering currently is a 400,000 convertible note. We have beta tested the data through the system, and now we're working with a credit union in one of the states, a multi-billion dollar one, to onboard and test. We'll also look at other institutions to onboard and test. So the money that we're raising at 400000 on the convertible note is to get us through the initial beta testing phase of institution, rolling into a two and a half million dollar Series A offering. And with that, um, there are certain additional benefits for the first 400000 uh, We've already raised 50000 of the four. We've raised equity capital before. That's how we've got to the position where we're able to create a beta product and go through 
and realize what we need to do for the whole system. Thank you. Okay, at this point I'd like to open it up for some questions. Select. Did it make sense? Go ahead. What are you going to charge for processing for the actual user? The, the user is going to charge between 3 and 5% depending on the size and volume of the transactions. So we're going to price it at the rate of a credit card rate. But if you look at what's going on currently, the transactions in most cases for the cannabis THC side of the industry is processing somewhere between 3 to 10% with all the fees and everything else. And then the customer, because most of them are tra processing through as ATM transactions, which is illegal and into itself, they're being charged $4 a transaction. So we get rid of all the $4 charges, we get rid of all the stuff. It's complete transparency through the system. That's the whole design is to make the regulators happy that what we're giving them is a complete look through the system so that the banks can sleep at night. And in the industry, the industry has their tools from our system that they can make sure that they're not having people do cross state line buying and everything else. So, yes? So if I understand this, this is like a bridge during the time where the feds do not have it uh, uh, legal. So what's the timeline that you see that that um, Great question. Last, and then what's your pivot where your next growth after that? Where you go after Perfect that? question. That's why in the beginning I talked about the other uses of Tricompay. Cash intensive businesses are here to, or will always be here. Our economy has always had... Now, somebody brought up the point before that in five or ten years it's going to be on shelves in stores. If you look at prohibition as a model, in the early 1900s, when they, in the 30s when they came back and made it legal, you had a large percentage of the marketplace that was still an underground illegal economy. Until you can get that illegal economy down to a manageable level, 10 or 15 percent, and I believe down to five, you're going to have in the cannabis industry enhanced compliance and enhanced regulatory reporting. So all the SAR reporting that's required, suspicious activity reporting. Normal businesses, you only, a bank only reports somebody if there has been a suspicious activity, meaning they're doing something they think is illegal. That gets sent to FinCEN, the FinCEN looks it over, and then gets out to some government agency. Cannabis, when you onboard that person, they, that bank has to upload a, a suspicious activity report. And then every 90 days, they have to file additional reports. Originally, it was, they were thinking 30, but now they came out with something that says, yeah, if you do it by 90. We're looking at the, our system is designed to look at it on a continuous basis and provide the institution reporting information every 30 days. That enhanced compliance is not going to go away until they get the illegal activity down to a manageable level. So that could be five years, 10 years. But in the interim, when they do make it federally legal, if we're large enough in size, and our idea is if we control 10, 20, 30, whatever the percentage of the marketplace we're going to be able to capture, somebody is going to buy us for one of two things. One is going to be because they want to enter into this marketplace and already take the accounts that we have and have a system in place that has brand identity, such as an investment bank, a bank, um, or a player in the financial services system. The second people is, as I've been talking about, our whole goal is to collect data on every single transaction, wholesale or retail. The more data we collect, the more information that we have, and the larger we grow, and able to have the anti-fraud provisions, we become a data company. And the information that we have becomes valuable to Walmart, Amazon, and people like that, that are going to want to sell additional products into this, the buyers. Because the buyers in this industry, in our target market, we're looking for the multi-state operators, which is a business-to-business -business component and as well as the larger private and people that, that need banking capabilities on a larger scale, as well as the retail side of that comes on board growing with it, where the retail side of it, they get the affiliate marketing and branding and all that type of benefit, but that provides the data to the companies that are looking to enter and sell products, in addition to retirees, which are very large market growing in this industry, as well as the 25 to 34-year-old marketplace. 